Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and we're doing another axe restoration video. As if we don't have enough axes already. But still, we're gonna have fun. You know, today is a perfect day to do an axe restoration project. It is raining, it's cold, I don't wanna be out foraging or fishing, and I just kinda of want something fun to do in the garage here for a nice little lazy Saturday. And so Tommy, will you help me pick out an axe to do? All right, so let me show you my axes and uh, let's pick uh, one to start on. Why don't you show me your favorite axes? Which, which one should we do? Why don't you pull out a couple? Hey Tommy, you picked a really good one here. This is a, a bearded axe from Eastern Europe. You can see it's a hewing axe. It's flat on one side. It's meant for making boards. Uh, and it's a pretty um, light, light axe. So, I don't think it's meant for heavy duty swinging. This is more like finishing work. And look at these cool designs that someone put on there. That is really neat. So we don't want to grind off these designs. So I'm not gonna use um, gr angle grinders or anything like that on it, but I wanna get the rust off without ruining the metal. And it's in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of mushrooming right there. I see where someone's been banging on that. And you can see right here, it's a little bit uh, dented in where somebody's been whacking on that. I'd like to fix both those things. But other than that, that looks really good. There's a, a seam, a crack in here from the forging process. But uh, I'm not too worried about that. Sax has gone through a lot of age and a lot of abuse and it hasn't broken yet. It won't break on me. What do you think we should use for an axe handle? This one. You know what kind of wood that is? Mm. It's called purple heartwood. It's a pretty cool. When you polish it all up, it turns deep purple. <gasps> oh, Aunt Melanie's going to like this axe. We might be able to polish it up so Aunt Melanie might think it's hers. <laughs> All right, Tom, well, I got an idea. I, I think we should soak it in this bucket of a vapor rust to get the rust off without hurting it. And I think what we need to do is heat up this end of this eye and bang it back out flat. Okay? Yeah, but we have to heat it without using the force. Yeah, because it's raining outside. So maybe I'll use my map gas torch. That sound like a good idea? Yeah, yeah! That torch over there? Yeah, it's right over there. After we get done fixing the eye, we can put it in the vapor rust and work on the handle while it soaks. Sound good? All right, let's do it. So we got the back of the eye so it's not quite as beat in, it's a little bit more flat. And here on this part where it was mushroomed over, I tried to uncurl it a little bit. Now it's a little ragged on the edge, but uh, I think we can clean that up and it, and it gave us a few millimeters extra that we would have otherwise lost. So I'm going to let this cool down and uh, go on to the next step. You know how I talked a big game earlier about that crack not making me worried? <laughs> Look at that, that thing opened way up. I think that was from when I was heating and beating on it that uh, straighten out the eye. That looks pretty hairy right now. <laughs> not gonna lie, that's concerning. <laughs> but there you go, I learned something new. When you heat steel red hot and beat it with hammers, it makes cracks worse. Okay, now that I say it out loud, it sounds pretty obvious. But at any rate, we're gonna keep going because we're in too deep and there's no turning back. So, uh, hurrah, let's go keep doing it. <laughs> All right, got this bucket of a vapor rust. Now we let this thing sit in some vapor rust. Ugh. All right, we got that ax head soaking in the vapor rust. It's great stuff. It'll dissolve the rust and you can leave it in as long as you want and it doesn't hurt the base metal. So we're gonna just let that sit in there and uh, I'm gonna go take a dinner break and then I can work on that handle some more. 
Well, that axe head's sitting in the vapor rust and it's about ready and I'm gonna pull it out here in a few minutes, but first I'm gonna shape out this handle. And to start with, I'm just gonna knock the corners off, make it kind of a circular oval and uh, we'll go from there. Well, there we go, got the handle done and sanded. It's a kind of a blocky shape, which I kind of like, but not too bad at all. So let's check out the head, see how it's doing. Well, there we go, it looks pretty good. Got all the rust off, but didn't take away the etchings and didn't hurt any of the base metal. Looks good. That's, that's pretty sharp, not too bad. But I've got a problem with the handle. This is a hewing axe. You see how it's flat and, and slightly off center? It's meant for going down the side of a log and making it flat, you know, making a beam or a board. You see how this handle is sticking out? So when you go down on the wood, it'll boom, hit the handle, and you won't be able to just shave along the side. This is also a hewing axe. And if you look, the handle, is curved, right? And uh, you can get that by taking a larger piece of wood and carving a curved handle, or you can do it by steam bending. And I have never done steam bending before, so I wanna give it a try. But I'm jumping into the deep end of the pool here. This is kiln drying purple heartwood, a very hard, dense wood, much harder than hickory. It's got a very dense pore structure. So getting the steam to penetrate this wood is gonna be tricky. Um, and it's a substantially thick piece of wood. It's been kiln dried and, and, and kiln dried wood, hardwoods like this are prone to cracking and breaking when you try to, to steam bend them. And I need to think of some way to rig something up so that I can soak this in hot water for a long period of time. All right guys, I figured out how I'm going to soak the wood in hot water. Here we go. We got the jacuzzi. 104 degrees Fahrenheit, bubbling hot fresh water. And what I've done is I've got this big Ziploc bag in here full of jacuzzi water, and I've got the purple heartwood sitting inside it. Now I've got the bag because my wife was a little concerned that uh, I might uh, stain the water and get it all nasty if I soak wood in it for like a week. So we're soaking it in the bag to keep it from contaminating the jacuzzi. But uh, so far, it's been in about 20 hours, and it has turned the water in the bag a little bit brownish. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll see. It's, a, it's a, maybe a little soft at the surface, but the water really hasn't penetrated very deep yet. I think it's gonna need to be in this water for a very long time before we can attempt to steam it to get any sort of bed. But I've never done this before, so it's an adventure. But, uh, yeah, let's give that a couple more days and see what happens. Well, this handle's been soaking in the jacuzzi for five days now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it onto a jig and start to bend it and put it back in the jacuzzi for a little bit, let it soak a little bit longer. And uh, then we're gonna see how that goes and steam it. Well, I can tell the wood has soaked up a bit of water because the head definitely doesn't fit on anymore, but that's just fine. So, I'm gonna put this spacer right here. So I'm gonna go check this back in the jacuzzi for a couple more days and then we're gonna try to steam it. All right guys, the wood's been soaking in the jacuzzi for nine days now at 104 degrees. So let's see, see how we're doing. Whoop. So just soaking it in the hot water with the clamps on has warped the wood a little bit. But we're gonna stick it in the oven at about 275 degrees with a bunch of uh, steaming water underneath it. 
and uh, see if we can't get a little bit more bend now that it's soaked for over a week. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> so the oven's a little bit too small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for a couple days and then I think I'm gonna hit it with the angle grinder, see what we can come up with uh, that way. Uh, yeah, best laid plans of mice and men and all that. All right, it's been about nine days in the hot tub and uh, about seven days drying. So let's take it off and see what we got. Oh, look how much that's rebounding. Look at that, that hardly bent it at all. Oh, geez. But I did succeed in putting a crack that runs down almost the entire length of the wood. So, yay. See what it did to the chunk of cedar that I was using as a spacer. Put a little bend in the angle iron. I think I bent it more than I did the purple heartwood. All right, there we go. Sure is pretty. Disappointed about the handle not curving like I wanted to, but man, it's good looking though. Well, there it is. That's a. Well, it sure turned out pretty, but I'm a little disappointed with the handle. It really needs to curve over, and I should have cut it off about right there to make it a one-handed uh, number. This is not a two-handed, big old hefty thing. This is for doing fine carpentry work, you know, as a hewing ax. Um, but uh, that's okay. Because the handle didn't turn out quite the way I want, I think what I'm gonna do is pop the handle off and use it for another project. Maybe turn it into a tomahawk handle or use it for an ax handle. So I didn't chop it short or because I think I'm gonna reuse it for something else. But I'm not gonna do it in this video. Uh, I'm gonna hang this up on the wall, think about it for a little bit, and uh, then we're gonna come back at it again later. Maybe I'll try it again with a softer piece of wood, something like a hickory or oak or something uh, that will steam a little bit better, and then set up a proper steaming setup instead of trying to jerry-rig something with a hot tub in an oven. And, uh, but, you know, it was fun, and that's the whole point of these things, just to have some fun, right? But thanks for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see some more successful ax restoration videos, check the link below. I'll put my uh, tool restoration playlist link in the bottom. But thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button, and you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.